In our full review of the all new generation of the BMW Z4 Roadster, I want to start to take you on a small journey. It is a journey throughout the most recent history of BMW Roadsters, starting with the Z1, built from 89 until 91, so just shortly with those sliding up side doors, very interesting. Then the first Z3, 95 until 2002. And the car always grew a little bit in length. This is the first Z4 generation from 2002 until 2008. And the second Z4 generation from 2009 until 2016. So the recent one that is now having the successor. And there was also the Z8. Just 5,700 pieces were hand built actually. And I want you guys to guess in which period of time this one here was built if you look at the other models here. So look again here at the Z8. Tell me in the comments without googling it. In which period of time was the Z8 built of those other four cars? And later on I'll solve the riddle. And don't google it yet. Keep watching. But now let's focus on the all new vehicle, exterior, interior and the driving experience here for you and how to go your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas. As everything in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. The build code of the new car is G29 and the new Z4 Roadster is built at Magna Steyr in Austria together with the Toyota Supra Coupe. So that one will be the Coupe and the BMW will be reserved for the Roadster style. Pretty interesting cooperation. Then in the front you can see you have a way wider front double kidney with BMW here. This is the M40i. So you have those matte gray accentuations. The base model would come with chrome double kidney frame and you can also get a dark package where you have a shiny black double kidney frame. So you have some possibilities there. The M40i also has bigger air intakes in the lower part, stronger lower bumper and those tail, uh, those headlamps, they start with LED and optional the ones we see here, the adaptive LED lights. 4 meters 32 or 14 foot 1 is the total length of the only generation of the Z4. That's 9 centimeters longer than the previous generation. So again, an increase in length has been the theme also throughout the evolution of the Roadster models. 17 inch rims it starts, 18 inch for the M40i which we see today here, 19 inch those ones we see, those ones are optional. The M40i also with a air outtake here in a contrasting way, contrasting mirror caps. This color is called frozen gray. It is a matte paint. You can also hear how I feel it basically. Very interesting. I really like those, uh, those matte gray paints. And the design is rising towards the end of the vehicle. And this new generation you can see is a little bit longer right there at the rear end. And that makes it, let's say, more grown up. This roof, by the way, is gray and it has this ice cream parlor function that you can also open and close it not only from the inside but also from the outside when you hold the closing button of the key the roof is available in gray as you can see here also fitting to the exterior color but also in black classic black convertible roof and you can also then open and close the windows just with keeping on the opening or closing button. So we can open it once more again. If you want to open it while driving, that's possible up to a speed of 50 kilometers an hour. And it takes about 10 seconds if you haven't checked it out in the time code so far. The rear end is where the car really changed its design. You have those more horizontally drawn tail lamps. That's pretty common now in the automotive industry to do it that way to give a visual width for the vehicle and this integrated wing, I think it's a good solution instead of adding a separate one. Here the M40i by the way comes with massive exhaust pipes and they look fake at first sight but they are indeed real because they indeed 
dissolve from the round pipe into this wide angular end pipe and on the other side by the way not the one that is close to me now so on the right side then there of the vehicle there you can also see an exhaust valve inside for even better sound. The M40i, by the way, not only comes with bigger brakes, but also with a rear differential lock and also with a lower adaptive sports suspension. There's also base suspension available, but you can also go for the adaptive sports suspension, which sits a little bit lower for the normal models. With the M40i, it automatically comes then. And interesting also that the weight balance, they could bring it here to 50-50 front axle, rear axle. That should promise us a very sporty ride. Looking forward to that very soon. What do you think? Does it look better with the open top or here with the closed top? I think they managed really to have a good design line when you close the top so that you have something like a coupe with a soft top when it's closed. So this is also one step forward with those new convertible roofs. They're also quite durable by the way, so it's not necessary to have a hard top. You know the Z4 also has a hard top history. So I think it's a good step that they went for the soft top here again. It's lighter, you have more capacity than in the trunk. And it's still quite durable and looks cool and still forms this coupe style silhouette, although it's a roadster. Or what do you think? You know, I always love to show you different colors. And here we also have the car in San Francisco red. It's a very bright metallic red color and also a cool color name, isn't it? This one is also equipped with a shadow line that gives you those glossy black frames around the BMW double kidney. So you can, of course, also combine those with different colors. Also, just to give you the information, with using the soft top now, they saved about 40 kilograms if you compare it to the predecessor generation. However, the car is a little bit longer, also got more safety equipment and stuff, so the weight then again was a little bit more. With deducting the weight savings for the roof, the overall weight increased by about 10 kilograms, so more or less the same than if you compare it to the predecessor generation. And by the way, the car is really much wider in the front. The front track from wheel to wheel is almost 10 centimeters wider and the rear track is almost 6 centimeters wider. And a general price overview, if you take German reference prices, would be 52,000 as a base engine, 2 liter one. Then this one here, the M40i, would start at 64,000. And if you equip the car, you know, with some extras we have here, of course, today, also with the gray car, so some spec then for the M40i, you land up about 75,000 euros. Yeah, that's not cheap at all. However, if you compare some of the competitors, especially in the premium segment, you can, you know, for example, take a Porsche Boxster then, you also reach those prices. You only get cheaper if you really go for this non-premium Roadster segment. So with the top model, the M40i, we got a 3-liter R6 engine, so 6-cylinder petrol engine, here with 340 horsepower, 4.5 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour so pretty good performance for sure and then you're also able to get smaller ones the 20i 2 liter 4 cylinder with 197 horsepower or the 30i a 2 liter 4 cylinder with 258 horsepower So before we take a look at the all new interior here, also the small evolution of the interior of BMW Roadsters. When it started with the Z1, you can see nowadays you would say this looks super cheap, but at that time it was really very modern and up to date. The Z3 also very puristic and again this is the pure Roadster choice still. AJ recently also took a spin exactly in this very vehicle there. Then the first generation Z4, this is also what you consider as, yeah, that already looks like a modern car. At that stage, more the infotainment systems were evolving, getting new screens and stuff. You can already see that at the second generation of the Z4, where the infotainment system is more prominent, for sure, as you would expect it today. 
And then especially the Z8, we will also solve our today's ridicule. Take a look at that, this retro style, which is still somehow timeless, incredible interior for sure. I think so, at least. What do you think? And this was built, the Z8, between 2000 and 2003. And what does that mean? Well, it was the closing stage of the first generation of the Z4. And if you then compare those, maybe scroll back again, you can see that the Z8 interior looks way more modern than the time uh, you know, it was built. And also if you compare the vehicles at the time where it was built. So that's the car key, nothing new there. We already know this one. The M40i also gets the M colors at the side of the key. Also with the keyless entry. And let's open those doors. You can see right here the Hofmeister knick at the door handles, this famous BMW design language. Then the sides are covered with leatherette, also really well tightly wrapped. Soft materials also for the armrest. Seems like a good build quality. You cannot really fit anything properly at the inside of the doors. That's of course a downside. The M40i has this entry cap right there. Then M Sport steering wheel. This is also then new. Those new buttons here, left side for the cruise control is optional. The AEB, autonomous emergency brake, is standard equipment. Cruise control with the adaptive one, ACC, optional. Right side, for example, for voice control. And this steering can even be heated. You can already see the screens, 10.25 inch on both sides, left and right, soon more deals to that. First of all, let's talk about the seats here from the side perspective of the interior. There are two seat forms available. This one is the optional performance seat that comes with the M40i or optional for the other cars, but also the base sports seats have already integrated head restraint. They don't look so different, so not too much of a difference. This one here has more electric function, functions, for example, here for the side bolsters, but they won't be too different, actually. And as surfaces, this is the optional animal skin equipment, which you don't really need. The performance seat usually comes with Alcatara on the inside, and BMW says real leather on the outside, they say at least. Well, on the inside, Alcantara is of course a better choice then also to stick a little bit more to the seat for the side support. That's better when racing. And you do not, do not stick to the seat as for the heat because with Alcantara you stay cooler in summer and warmer in winter than with this one. Also in the US, there will be a full sensor tech option available that you get a more sustainable leatherette choice but that's only in the US and only with the standard seat not here with the adaptive sport seat it's a little bit complicated as always those trims but you know maybe rewind this part if you're really interested in buying one then you know exactly then what to buy so I would go with the base seat with the sensor tech in the US or if you only have the possibility with this one for example with the M40i or are in the non-US markets, then go with this adaptive sportsies with the Alcantara on the inside. That would be my two tips. Well, I'm 1 means 86 or 6 foot 1 if you haven't subscribed so far and I have the seat at the moment in the lowest position. Indeed, you sit very low in the roadster. That's you know what's supposed to be. By the way, early I tested also all seating positions in Z1, Z3, Z41, Z42 and here Z43 and also in the Z8 and the Z3 was really completely different. You, more, more like a MX-5 Mazda today, where you sit more on the car, have this true roadster feeling. Those Z4 roadsters, they don't have exactly the 100% true roadster feeling. It's more a compromise between roadster and comfort for sure. Which is again, considering the buyers of this vehicle, maybe also not a bad decision. You just have to bear that in mind. So that means, you know, all the console here, the middle console, is really high in comparison to where you're seating. And a real true play road, so like the Z3 or the Master MX-5, I would more expect to sit a little bit more on the car to have like a smaller go-cut. But you know, also those cars here, they tend to go longer and longer and longer. But interesting is still that I have quite a comfortable seating position. I can watch those digital instruments. There's also the new head-up display, soon also deal to that. That is an option then. Digital instruments always come like those. And important, of course, I mean, now I have, you know, some free air. And you can see that the front dashboard here, the front windscreen, sorry, goes way over my head. 
But interesting, of course, what about when I close the roof? Because then actually, so I turn on the ignition for that, or maybe leave the engine. <laughs> so, what about that roof? Yeah, there it comes. What about the headroom when the roof is closed? That's of course very interesting. And this seems here, although the car looks super flat, seems to be abundance of headroom here. So even for tall people, no problem in this road side. And there's this again, an advantage of the very low seating position and this non so super true roadster style that you can even get along with taller people here in that vehicle. And by the way, the steering wheel here has a manual control for reach and height and works in a very smooth way, so you can also do that just with one hand. Interior overview, very interesting because they use good materials. They did have to work on their interiors and gladly BMW did. A structured surface with soft touch, really like that. Then a still classic manual climate unit with a display right there, but you can still click it while driving. I need to have this pure roadster stuff and infotainment unit with touch screen, but you can also use this turning and pressing knob, the classic one still. The steering wheel a little bit asymmetrical as we know from the M steering wheels, pretty thick also. Clear view to the digital instruments, soon looking forward how that works on, out with the head-up display. And also metal knurled volume knobs, I like that, that they paid attention to details right there. Those are some hotkeys by the way, you can freely program them. And when you take a look at the lower area right there, we have the gear shifter, automatic gearbox, 8-speed, you have some USB power supply right there, but also inductive charging possibilities for your phone. You can also close it. Ah, here it is. Just like this, manual, front and, and rear. Nowadays they do come with those automatic functions, but I mean, why not? That's a simple solution. And for those digital gauges, you can play around with them as well. Right side RPM, left side speed. You can also have the consumption meter or also the G meter. But of course, it makes most sense when you really start the engine, then they come alive and you can see the speed really and the RPMs going up. Rum. Rum, rum. And the new head-up display. See here the speed or the allowed speed at the moment, and you'll also get GPS information if you have a map. And that's also the advantage of a digital cockpit here. You can also get the GPS information in the middle of the display right there then too. So the infotainment system, again, it reacts quite fast, very responsive. See, wow, really cool. And I like the visual display too. So, some, oh, some spiders get around right here in the car, obviously. You need those microfiber tissues all the, all the time. You also have a home button, a home hotkey with the turning and pressing knob. And I always search, for example, here for the settings and see how fast can I change the language? Do I find it in an intuitive, intuitive way? And indeed, that was actually quite easy to find. I tend to use the hotkeys in the lower part then. This is the basic screen. This is then telephone, either with a Bluetooth connection or wireless CarPlay available as with other BMWs, but no Android Auto because they don't trust their data system. So, and car, you can also have some you know, vehicle status information, for example, also with tire pressure. You have a nice visualization of the car, also driving information, sport displays available with a G meter and some more stuff to play around with. Here again, the lower middle console with those driving modes. Makes sense with the adaptive suspension then, of course. Here well, from the inside you can control the roof. And again, also metal knurling for the turning and pressing knob. And indeed, I'm really satisfied now with the build quality. The middle arm rest, you can slide them open and another spot to store your smartphone, for example, and a USB-C port as well as adaptive cup holders. And about the storage areas, well, they are indeed limited. Here you have some room, even a top tether, by the way, for a child seat here behind the co-driver seat. And you can also reach through, through the trunk from here. This is ski hatch, basically. Won't be too long enough for skiers, I think, but you can at least, you know, put some longer things than if you also open it at the other side. Or for cats. Or for cats, yeah, of course. Why for cats? 
<laughs> yeah, cats do fit in there. Yeah. Good, uh, good idea by Holger. <laughs> Thank you. So now the boot capacity and you can see it doesn't matter if the roof is open or not. It will always remain like this, 281 liters. Of course, it's a big advantage if you compare it to a hard top. So this one will not change because the roof is basically on that. When I put a cabin trolley in here, you can also see that works quite well. So um, indeed for two people for a weekend trip, that's still fine. And here you can also open this small hatch. Don't open the hatch, don't open the hatch. <laughs> well, someone opened the hatch at some point then, you know, remember that? Here, yeah, hello. <laughs> of course you can close it then here again, but I mean, you get some more possibilities then with that at least. Welcome to Thomas's active driving lounge today with the all new Z4, the M40i with this 3 liter 6 cylinder. And well, I mean, driving with open top is always an enjoyment, and especially if it's a roadster, an agile roadster. And I'm just driving in the comfort mode now to start it off, and the steering is super precise and direct. See here, just a slight command directly some changes something on the road. Also here, close to Sintra, close to Kashkais, near Lisbon, <laughs> I've given a couple of hints. It's one of, the, one of my favorite tracks here. Really cool, it's public road, of course don't it's exaggerated, but you can still drive in a very enjoyable way. And you hear the engine sound when you drive it slowly and being in comfort mode, you can also drive it rather silently, that's no problem. It's also, of course, important if you're starting in a neighborhood or something. And it feels very refined and the car feels super balanced. And it is not so exaggerating from the driving feeling that you would say, oh, it's such a fun car, but I couldn't drive more than an hour with it. I feel I can drive also longer with that and that's also very important. It doesn't, for example, feel as rough as a Porsche, for example, you know, like the, the Porsche Boxster has an advantage due to the midship engine concept, but this one here more feels cruisable as well. But the question is, if we go, for example, to the sport mode, have that adaptive suspension a little bit stiffened up, also then shifting up later, shifting down earlier, we can now also hear something more of the sound. Does that also, whoa, that's a huge rock. We shouldn't hit that one, wow. Yeah, that can happen here. Now you hear something more of the sound. The question is, can this car also be aggressive? Here when I'm having the throttle and then letting the throttle go, you hear those exhaust valve plop, 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 from the rear, really interesting. And immediately it's directly on the gas, so it almost feels like an electric vehicle because it's light, it's not too big, but still I got this immediate throttle response. And of course the road is not too bad, so it doesn't get too uncomfortable, although we are on the sporty adaptive suspension setting. Really feels like being in perfect control. The sport control, the sport mode also lets me you know, play around with the car just a little bit more. I mean, even now at 70 kilometers an hour, it feels basically, you know, like nothing for this vehicle. So you can so easily catch those corners and it's really super fun. The rear can go out just a little bit in the sport mode. You have to pay attention to that. Of course, rear wheel driven only and with so much power on the rear axle, you really have to pay attention. Wow. I mean, I'm not even shifting back a gear. <laughs> Holger is like <gasps> on the co-driver seat. But he's used to that stuff when his drivers would drive drives with me. Wow. Really cool. Also, you can use the pedals here. <laughs> flap, flap. Shifting up or shifting down. 
if I'm going to do from third to second. Wow, that is a really good sound. It's always nice to use the menu shifting pedals. So if the corner gets a little bit sharper, I feel in my fingers basically how I rub the tire to the ground, but the car won't go anywhere in the front. So um, this is basically the farthest it goes away from understeering. Wow, what a performance. Really, really nice. I mean, you can also go to a um, traction control setting on something. Um, however, for public roads, I cannot recommend that. There's a you no know, sport DSC or ESC. And then you can also turn it completely off if you want to spin around the car, for example, in the parking lot. But again, it should only be done when you're not on public roads because again, so much power just in the rear axle and in the sport mode, you can already spin it around just a little bit in the corners. And you can see I'm rather relaxed in steering, so I don't have to steer so much. I really like how progressive they've made that steering. Really, really cool. So I'm having a lot of fun. Um, of course, it doesn't feel super purist, the vehicle, if you compare it with older roadsters, you know, or even some smaller ones. Yes, they have grown in size, but still, you know, um, I think basically I can understand this decision, especially after, after driving it, because in everyday driving light, you need some more comfort most times, unless you're really, you know, like the super racer guy. And here indeed, they could combine still some great roadster driving fun, but you have comfort left. So let's turn around and because this part of the road is so great, I will just want to do it once more. <laughs> it's the best ride since months. Best ride since months, says Holger. So he is obviously also enjoying it. And I think it's also a good sign. So, I mean, how do you feel as a co-driver? Is it like too bad on, on your bike? Is, no, is, it, is it fine? Only fine. Cool. So I think that's always a good sign when the co-driver says it's really fun. That also speaks for the car. That's, you know, because there are some very extreme sports cars where the co-driver is like, <gasps> Holger was, was joking uh, earlier for that. So obviously he is enjoying it and then I can enjoy it maybe a little bit more. Wow. It almost sounds a little bit like a Formula One car, right? <laughs> and again, the manual mode is of course really cool. Dropping from the exhaust valve. I really like how balanced the car is. Just a... Wow. Yeah, suspension-wise, I mean, look at that now, like slalom. Wow. Look at the response and how it's incredible how good the handling of this car is. Although it does not have a midship engine concept, so they really figured out that weight distribution. So anyone thinking like, Wait a minute, is this half a Toyota? Actually, even if it would be, I would not care at all because it really drives superbly. So, oh, heard that. You know, what about when I really accelerate it hard? So I can also go to this sport shifting mode now with the, uh, with the gear shifter to the, to the left side and it's even a little bit more extreme. going downhill. Let's see, the brakes. Always be careful when all other people are on the road. Those bigger brakes in the M40i do a good job as well. Now some corners to enjoy for you. Now the brakes will work a little bit more. The thing is, 
Although there's so much horsepower just in the rear axle, I really feel super much in control still of the car. Very important thing. So, if you compare it also with the... <laughs> that's a real road starter. If you compare it with the previous generation of the Z4, it feels more grown up. And yes, it has even grown in length just a little bit. But although it has grown up, it is still very, very agile. So the newest technology made this possible. So we still have this super fun ride, but it's definitely more comfortable than before. So, and I think this would also be a key factor to me because so far, sometimes I had a lot of fun in the uh, older set force, but after a while, the lower back was aching just a little bit. And I feel that's becoming better now, for sure. So what about some, let's say, when the road is a little bit straighter here now, for example, let's go back to the, let's say, the second gear and have like 40 kilometers and then hammer it just through. That was already 80. That was just 40 to 80 kilometers, just like this. I think that part with the big rock should be coming soon. Oh, are we already past that? Of course, you have to bear in mind that also that sure looked like a BMW 8 series. Hmm, I guess we can drive an auto food as well. We will link that review, of course, for you. So now there's a truck in front of us, so we hold just a little bit and let him drive. And there's something else we can try, actually. So, um, you know, some small acceleration from standstill, for example. And what we do for that is um, going to the traction mode. So this is basically Sport EC. Go with the Sport mode also as a shifting lever. And then we hammer the brakes all through and go through the throttle. Launch control. I was on 0 to 70, so I was just going straight again because I was seeing possible danger from other cars. So now again, a little bit safer, let's try. No, it doesn't want to do it a second time. That's strange. Let's pull over to the side just a little bit. So that's always something. I had that with um, some AMG cars already. Um, that sometimes was not possible to repeat it instantly, um, by the way. We have your cameras, also very well to see everything. So, traction to the left side, sport mode there. Let's go to the road again, now it's coming. Hitting the brakes hard. No. So now it's not saying me that, that it would do the launch control. So obviously you cannot repeat it that often just after each other. Hmm, too bad, but you know, that's why we're also doing those tests. But I mean, I carried the launch crew through until about 70 kilometers, and that was actually pretty decent as well. So it, the, the key thing of that is, you know, not to be most spectacular, but to get the most traction to the ground. And that's clearly what this vehicle did there. So maybe try to cool it off a little bit. Still got the EC on traction, so again, I can play around with the car a little bit more. Sport Plus mode. Let's see. Let's try it once more. The car is now willing to do it again. Yeah, now he's doing it. Now the other Z4 is coming, just waiting for safety. Here we go, guys. <laughs> so I know. Yeah. That was again 0 to 70, but again, I won't go through with it all the way, just for safety precautions. But definitely very impressive. Maybe we should try that, like with the going through the higher speed at the racetrack once. And of course, always a good sound for you to hear then too. So, I mean, the agility of this vehicle, that's what we are 
testing here mainly with this car today. But I think it's also quite suitable for an everyday driving life. This is also something in the evolution of this vehicle for sure. As for the wind features, by the way, I mean, driving with the open top here, that's also something that changed. They inc increased it actually, or, you know, improved it. It doesn't have to be that warm anymore with this vehicle. So before you had a lot of wind coming to the cabin, but now not so much anymore, at least when you have the windows up there. So this can also move this car more to a summer only convertible to an all season convertible. That would also be very important to me for sure. So I wonder if it fits with our camera when we put the roof up. Let's just risk it. Yeah, that works. So now we're also we're driving 40 kilometers, 50 would be the maximum. We close the roof while driving. That's also the reason I really love soft tops. I would always go with that. And now it's probably silent in here. Of course, the big difference to driving with open top, that's for sure. So now you can also hear the more sonorous low frequency sound of that vehicle when the roof is closed and it's actually quite silent in here. I'm driving 90 kilometers an hour now, almost 90. So the sound dampening also was increased. That might also be important if you think about you know, going for a coupe or for a convertible. Sometimes you want to go a little bit faster uh, and still want it properly silent on the interior. I mean, if you're going on long autobahn motorway runs, this could even speak for a two-liter engine because at some point maybe this one might get too loud. However, if you go in the comfort mode, then you can also decrease it. So also then you know the, the valve is not that active. So you have in the comfort mode and have the roof closed. <laughs> There's the eight series again. They are also dry driving this road up and down, it's really cool. So here in comfort mode and with roof closed, you can also have a silent experience. That's also quite nice. I think that also works on a, on a longer term, for example. However, what I feel again that this um, leather surface is getting really hot, although it's just 20 degrees Celsius outside. I mean, I'm working a little bit with the car, yes. But again, the Alcantara seats would stay cooler that would be definitely a good advantage for that. So, so my enter driving then with top closed. Even in the comfort mode here when the car is silent, it's really fun to drive. Then again, if you put to the sports mode, more responsive. Here we go, sports mode again. A little bit more, whoa. <laughs> yeah, that's a camera, a film camera, not a speed camera, but you know, just in case, <laughs> always pay attention to that. Stone. Oh yeah, the stone is coming. Maybe we should pick up that stone, I mean, where well, we are all cable bound now, but um, next time we pass this area, we'll go outside, you know, if we, we, we are fully wired, Every, everyone's wire wired here at the moment, we can get outside. But the next time we pass here, then we'll remove that stone, so no one has to, you know, drive around that stone and, you know, possible danger and stuff. And again, if someone now says, that, oh, why isn't he driving even more, you know, faster, more dangerous, whatever, safety first, you always, we always want to have fun, also show the performance of the vehicles. But when we're on public roads, safety is always number one, that's for sure. So, now with the closed roof, some more agile driving, yeah, sometimes when you're in a sport suspension, get some more kicks in the suspension for that. So that's better than in a comfort mode. But again, if you want that sporty situation, I truly appreciate that. And I'm also fully using the new head-up display. Actually, I didn't look at digital instruments just for once. I just went with the head-up display because, especially when we're going faster, I have some narrow bends here. It's just so much better, especially for a sports car, to have the head-up display directly in your line of sight. Then you can just concentrate on the road even better. 
And this is also something which speaks for an evolution of roadsters. You know, going from more purist approach, which I can still totally understand, to more evolved cars, also with more assistant systems for safety. And this can also increase driving fun, you know, because when you're driving safer, you can also at the same time have more fun. And now to our conclusion for today with the all-new BMW Z4 Roadster. Well, it is somewhat a more drastic change in design, that's for sure. But I think the overall design works. The only thing I would have wished is that maybe this side line doesn't race towards the end. It would just be a straight one, then it would be more timeless, I would say. And then I also like the new rear and also that's a little bit longer that does the car quite well. Also the interior, you have some more comfort now definitely, also for taller people. Seating choice, I explained to you earlier what is the best choice there. You got new infotainment system, this is basically the biggest change on the interior that you're up to date as for that. But a lot of people will still miss the Android Auto, but that's a general BMW subject for sure. Driving wise, it really handles superb with an equal weight balance, a great driving feeling for sure, and of course, abundance of power. You didn't you know, ever have had so, man, so much power then, especially here with the M40i. The lower engines, the small engines, will also do just fine for this car, especially when, when you want to more pick it as a purist version. Then again, if you want more sound, it will always be the three liter six cylinder here for sure. Well, the only thing that is missing a little bit if you think about the evolution of Roadsters, to me the Z3 is still the real one basically because it had the true Roadster feeling. Nowadays those roads are more get in a comfortable Roadster stuff. So if you're more this Roadster purist seeking, I'm not exactly sure if you will be 100% happy with it, but if you then think about it and also think about, you know, yeah, I'm not going on a race track with that one every day. It's really, you know, for you know, enjoying life as well. And then you can understand why this evolution has taken place. So even if also myself, maybe want, you know, driving wise, a smaller Z3, probably even in everyday driving life, I will be happier then with a little bit bigger, more comfortable Z4. That's my conclusion here for today. What do you think? Leave me your comments and let's discuss the all new Z4. Join us also next time at Autofuel.